Okay. All right, this is take one of Boating McBoatface. The boat tending. Hello and welcome to This Is. Matt, why am I about to look dumb on the internet? All right, we're back for another game show. Last time we played Vintage Tech, you think you did pretty well. I always do well. I'm a smart person. You right? got two out of three correct because you straight up guessed. And the one that you said, oh, I know all about is the one you got wrong. So we're gonna play this again. The rules of the game are simple. I'm gonna ask you when technology that you think is modern yes. actually was invented. Yes. And for every one that you get wrong, $500 will be added to our mystery tech budget. Are you ready to play? No. Well, you're gonna play. No. <laughs> I'm good, bye. I can still play the game without you, and after 30 seconds of no answering, then okay, it counts as a loss. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, mystery tag budget, let's go. What's in your pocket? Well, I can tell you, I have a smartphone. That's all I needed to know. Telephones have revolutionized the way we communicate with each other. Yes. And they I have a wide variety of different ways of calling you stupid on my phone. It's true. You do call me stupid a lot on your I phone. I have many options. You also have another phone that you I carry around. I do have another phone. You, so you use two phones to call me stupid. Oh, that's a good point. I'm going to make this one easy for you. In what century were telephones invented? Right. Explain to me what your definition of a telephone is. Is it like two cavemen yeah. yelling across a field or something? Like, give me more detail. No, that's yelling. I need more information. No, you don't. That's not the, that's not how this works. You so. don't hear Ken Jennings asking what? Alex Trebek for more information. Yeah, because they have real writers who know how to ask correct questions. I didn't get to pick a category. I don't get to pick why are you stupid for 300. I have never been more offended by something I 100% agree with. Is it A, the 700s, B, the 1600s. C, 100 BCs. I don't know how to say that. That BCs. The 100 BC century. Or D, 1800s. I'll start out by saying I have no absolute whatsoever remote idea of the answer to this. I don't have a concept of what a telephone could be. Because when you say telephone, my initial instinct is the 1800s. You know, when the telephone was invented, but you're crafty, you're gonna try to make me look dumb. So you're gonna be like, oh, it was the uh, Leonardo da Vinci who invented the, the string which you could yell through or something dumb which doesn't make any sense. Or I could be trying to trick you and it actually is the 1800s. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Maybe I should just say 1800s then. Now there's actually some debate over who actually invented the I debate it's 100 BC. Most will say it's Alexander Graham Bell in yeah. 1976. Wait, did you say 1976? I did. Did you yes. write your cue card nope. wrong? I'm not re <laughs> it's very it's very tiny text. You wrote the it's cue card. It's very tiny text. 1976, yeah. great year for Alexander right. Graham Bell. So him and Thomas Watson had the famous first phone call, Mr. Watson, come in, I want you. That is, is that actually the real words he said. Yes. <laughs> Other people will say it was the Italian-American inventor, Antonio Meucci. So he invented a voice communication apparatus in 1849. However, it was Bell who beat him to the patent office. Meucci's design looked an awful lot like physicist Robert Hooke's lover's telephone. Roughly 1,200 to 1,400 years ago, around the year 700-ish, is the first known use of the lover's telephone where they attach two halves of gourds together with twine. The device that was found in an ancient tomb had 75 feet of twine together. It's actually kind of far. It was elites who used them because in their civilization, it was actually forbidden for elites and servants to have face-to-face -face communication. So that is your first answer wrong and $500 has been added to the budget. Well, I'm gonna feel actually okay with that because both of my answers were wildly off. And while I think the idea of literally two cans and a piece of string in the middle is a wild farce of an idea that you're gonna try to tell have me that's a telephone. Have you ever tried to use it? No, I have not. It works, it works. So FaceTime, was it invented in A, the 1870s, B, the 1960s, C, the 1930s, or D, the 1920s? You know my question. What is your definition of FaceTime? Are you saying like an actual video call? Yes. Okay. Across distance. My strong inclination is the 20s or the 30s because that was when TV was just starting to become a thing and there's no reason why for your FaceTime you couldn't just have like two TV style broadcasts being transmitted across. I don't know why this is what TV looks like, but this is just imagine. TV being waved like this. It's gotta be the 20s of the 30s. I'll give you a hint. It's not record. 
it's live. I feel pretty confident in 20s and 30s, though. I think it's just a 50-50 shot. I'm going to say the 1920s final answer. Thomas Edison's telephonoscope was first introduced in the 1870s and was published in Punch magazine. Punch was actually a satire magazine, and at this point, video calling was, in fact, science fiction. However, in 1929, German scientist Dr. George Schubert showed off the aka the visual telephone system. It used coax cable to transmit 180 lines of resolution, oh. roughly 40,000 pixel equivalent, hmm. at 25 FPS from Berlin to Hamburg. That actually sounds very impressive. But beating Dr. Schubert to the punch was AT&T's R&D division, Bell Labs, who in 1927 developed the iconophone, which was from the Greek words for image and sound. I think I'm right. <laughs> the think iconophone think right. ran just 18 frames per second. Sorry. And the video portion was only one way. And the whole apparatus took over the whole room. Okay, you just get to the point where I'm right. You are correct. Yes! Yes! So Herbert yes. Hoover, before he was president, used that iconophone to give an address from D.C. to New York mm. in 1927. I got to milk a cow at the Herbert Hoover Presidential Library. It was very, very entertaining. You got one of one of two. 50%! Now, it, that's passing! So AT&T continued their development. So in 1964, they introduced oh, word. the picture phone at the World's Fair. So it was a tiny TV with a built-in camera. And then in the 70s, it was actually commercially available. Dude, that is so cool. So that was the thing. I remember when I was growing up, the dream was to have video calling. And it really wasn't a thing that anyone really had until things like Skype came along and then later FaceTime. And that is because for the 1970 version of the picture phone, it cost $160 a month just for the equipment. And then 25 cents a minute per calling. For context, that is roughly the equivalent to $1,000 a month for the equipment and $5 a minute when you adjust for inflation. So that's, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it didn't really take off because even the ultra rich, like this is expensive. When were DVDs slash Blu-rays, so video discs, invented? Was it A, 1890s, B, 1970s, C, 1920s, or D, 1910s? So, I'm immediately gonna be really pedantic on you. When you say DVDs or Blu-rays, does it, like, does Laserdisc count? Or are you specifically sure. saying when was DVD? Sure, Laserdisc is a video disc. Okay, so a video that is put onto some form of a disc. And I will remind you, uh, for those who didn't watch our Vintage Tech episode last time, all the dates that I pick are not just arbitrary numbers. They are all actual numbers in history where major things happened for this technology. But it wasn't necessarily the correct answer. So maybe like there was a disc that had like a frame of video in 1974 or whatever. It's called a picture. One frame of video is called a picture. Thanks, Matt. So, so my immediate thought would be something like Laserdisc, which was, I believe, the first commercially available disc style format. I know that there are ways today to encode video onto records. However, I don't know if that was a technology that was necessarily around back in the day, but I think Laserdisc is way too simple and easy for you to make that the answer. I think it's probably 1910s or 20s. I'm going to say 1920s. Final answer. In the 1890s, there were a number of dish-shaped mediums, such as Edward Moybridge Zopraxiscope. What? Nothing old has a real name. It's just like, how many random words can we smash into the hydroelectrophonograph? Everything was named after the technology to, like, that was squished together. Well, to be fair, now it's just like, why do you just keep dropping vowels from normal <laughs> words and calling those startups? Yeah. I'm looking at you, waveform. <laughs> Wait, wait, but but don't you want to be on Waveform one day? The what ironic if, thing what is... What if Marquez unsubscribes? So these were paper or glass discs, oh, and they genius. had about a dozen or so images. So they were a zoetrope. When they moved at the correct speed, they had motion. However, that doesn't count, though, right? That's not a disc. Does that technically count or no? So I'm not counting it. Okay, good. Because in 1927, Scottish inventor John Logie... Baird? I don't know. I can't pronounce words. Invented the phonovision. Sounds very legitimate. I think that's the correct answer. The great, great, great grandfather of the DVD burner. Only scanned about 30 lines of resolution, and it was just, 
I mean, it looked something like this. Dude. Yeah. No. No. So while that was considered a massive failure, video discs were pretty much just abandoned until the 70s when Hitachi and Sony started making their own versions. Now, Laserdisc was actually like the fourth or fifth video disc. There was all sorts of other ones. That was the first that. commercially like... Not even. No. Not, not even. It was just... It, that just ended up becoming the most popular of these other formats. So the way that CDs work now and DVDs is the data is actually burned on with a laser yeah. in, in, in its grooves. It's microscopic grooves. So it's it's up or down, zeros or ones, yes. and you have enough of those. And, it and so that whole technique was inspired by the way that he was doing these records and actually doing physical engraving on the disc. So Which that is why the 1920s is when video discs were invented. So are you trying to tell me right now that lifetime total, I am four for six in this game, which is very much full of a lot of questionable decisions, and yet I'm still mostly correct? Because you're just taking a dart and throwing them at the wall. You're, I am using deductive reasoning. Your deductive I am reasoning. Using my big monkey brain to try to pare it down to something which might make some sense. And then I use some luck to narrow it down to a four out of six chance of being correct. So what do you guys think? What should I test Austin with next? I just want him to be wrong. You know, tweet at me, leave it in the comments. Let me know what I should quiz him on next. He doesn't I'll read the comments I'll anyway. I'll accept any so. congratulatory tweets or comments of how really huge brained I am or how Matt sucks at choosing questions. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Until next time, Matt, play us out. Oh God. Please, someone play that 1920s disc already. Oh, I don't like this at all.